Where's the remote? Found it. Turn off the lights. All right. Did you grab the drinks? Yeah, I got them. Okay, I'm making the popcorn. It's starting. Come on. All right, all right. Okay, I'm here. Hit the button. Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm Gianna. <laughs> and welcome to, to the We Watch, watch it, it All podcast, podcast, where we watch it all and give you our opinions. AKA the opinions no one ever asked for. And people are probably like, what is what is always so funny to this one that she's always chuckling? Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. I Even don't if really we know. recorded this and we saw she the... She laughs the minute I say hi. I'm Jill. I don't know. You're just like, you hide your hand. No, oh, hi, I'm Jill. You know, it's just one of those. So you go into character. You just... It's like those people mode. that like accidentally leave like footage in their YouTube videos where they'll be like, they'll be like, oh, Teddy, we're going to do this. And then they cut and they're like, mm -hmm. it's just monotone. It's usually like children YouTubers that are like 30 year old adults marketing themselves to children. Oh, okay. What? You, you, it's a thing. All right. So for news, I start, first off, I have one piece of news that I found last Monday, I think. Well, not last month. Yeah, right as soon as we finish, pretty much finished the other podcast, I threw this piece of news on because it was so kooky. And I felt like after your reaction to the whole Bambi thing, you're going to be like, what oh the hell God, is this? Not that it's one. not a horror movie, but I have nine or so pieces of news and you have one. Yeah, one. It only happened last night, so. So do you want to say your one now, or do you want to wait till the sure. end? Or? Kiki Palmer's pregnant, for those of you I that don't know. That that's uh, She was in that Disney show. Um, Disney show. Nickelodeon. Or was it Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon. Two Jackson VP. Yeah, she was Nickel Nickelodeon. Sorry. Oh, my God. So, like, it was a curse word. They're no better, Nickelodeon. I'm not saying they're better. I'm just okay, saying well, that was a good show. She announced it last night respect. on uh, Saturday Night Live that she is, all the rumors she's pregnant. It's true. She's, she opened her sh jacket and revealed the big old belly with yeah. Darius Jackson, the brother of Sar... Sarunis Jackson. He's on the TV show Insecure. But you know what? I, I was thinking as a uh, actor, you know, it is hard as an actor singer who's making good money, and you want to make sure that somebody's not with you for the wrong reasons. Siblings of friend of actors that you've been with yeah. are a good go to because as long as you know there is well they have they're connected to like a well yeah that's what another I'm thinking. person like, who already has money, so why would they need your money? They could just mooch off their sibling. Well, okay. that and plus obviously the sibling should know whether or not their brother or sister is a valid person well, yeah. that can be trusted so like that is and they a already have like an idea of the fame industry and all, and all like that yeah, yeah like they kind of get that it it's good that, is a good, that is a good way to go because it is hard to know if someone's with you for you yeah. know the wrong reasons and stuff so because she's got that nickelodeon money well yeah and she's done other things she's well no she's in that things. new movie no and she actually she's was on lot. um Good Morning America, was it? Um, I don't know if it was a segment or what she did, but she was on for many... Um, oh, like one of those talk show ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with uh, the guy from Kelly Ripa's, uh, the football player, Mike, Michael Strahan. Michael. Strahan. She yeah. was on with him and another girl. They did, like, the three of them did, like, a little trio type thing when they were on there or something. Yeah. Because I remember her, but... Yeah. All right. That's it. That's all I got done. Are you ready for this one? I don't know if I want to save it. No, I'll just do it first. So on February 24th, the movie Cocaine Bear, directed by Elizabeth Banks, will be released, which it's based on a true story where a Elizabeth black Banks? Banks? Yes, who did Pitch Perfect, by the way. But I think she's an actress, no? I don't know. I don't know. I just know she did Pitch Perfect. It's a true story about a actual bear who ingested a duffel bag of cocaine, which was about 40 kilos, that was thrown off a plane in 1985. The real bear is actually on display in Kentucky at the Kentucky Fun Mall. And the slogans for the movies are, get in line and don't coke the bear. The first trailer's out now. I watched it. Honestly, it's not one I'd go and see in theaters, but it looks a little scary because obviously like, it's a bear on a rampage and supposedly... Like, according to, like, animalologists? I don't know what you would call them. Animalologists? I don't know what you Never would call them. i heard of that. Like, the people that study animals, they supposedly, this bear... Oh, no, I'm not surprised. She's a comedian. Well, the Pitch Perfect, when I saw the trailer for the cocaine bear thing, it was, yeah, it made sense. Well, I don't I'm not saying she's, I mean, I know she is an actress and filmmaker, but... She's um she was the one that played in the Hunger Gang games the lady with the little lips and oh that's she, her yeah that was her in wow. there but she um I I feel like she does a lot of like comedy Comedies. like well yeah like that's what I'm saying just... Pitch Perfect is a comedy essentially but um but I could absolutely see here's her doing the fun thing like so forget the movie Kentucky they have the bear stuffed on display in their mall like i said but they also have a whole website where you can buy cocaine bear merch look at this it's, I, it's supposed to be a true story it's true no it is true 
it, they have cocaine bear snow globes earrings everything like that you could imagine cocaine berry candle i mean it's insane Koki the bear don't do drugs like what it to me it's just i was i didn't first off i was already like okay wow but then i saw that the not only the mall well yeah it's in a mall but it's like i was just like that's so funny that this this has been this is now like the pride of kentucky is this cocaine bear? Keep Are we ready going. to go to the next piece of news? All right. Yeah, it's not like I have it, so go ahead. No, and I, yeah. Out. Uh, Mandalorian season three will return March first. Very exciting. I did see that one, so technically I could have had that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and during CCXP, John Favreau, who does the show, he teased that season three is bigger in scope than the previous seasons, with more space battles, more Mandalorians, and some surprises. Really. Yeah, which I'm like, who could they bring back now? You got Luke Skywalker, like you know what I mean? Like it's like, it's like who who would you bring? Who would you bring back? Also, a new trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will release on December 13th. Very exciting! All right, you're gonna have to help me with his last name, Michael Gandolfini. Yeah, best known to play as the young version of Tony Soprano yeah. in the Many Saints of Nor- of uh, Nork, has been cast in a major role in Daredevil: Born Again. I, they haven't said the role, but he's going to be in Daredevil. Good for him. Also, a new trailer for HBO Max, The Last of Us, is out. That's going to premiere on January 15th. I watched the trailer. It, it Listen, uh, Pedro Pascal does Joel's voice so good. It looks like there's going to be a little bit of good humor. It looks like it might have the scary elements. I'm just so, like, I'm like, how are they going to make this, you know, have the same feel that you feel in the game? Because, right, when I play this game... I'm I'm on edge. I'm always on edge, like trying to sneak around, not get caught. So I'm curious to see how they'll transform this into, you know, you're you're not controlling these char- characters. So like, how will that feel? Is what I'm waiting to see how it'll go. Hmm. The movie Bullet Train is now available to stream on Netflix. I just saw that this morning. Yeah, yeah. so that's exciting. Yes. Um, DC's Blue Beetle has released its first teaser poster. Blue Beetle. Yes, it's going to have the um, kid from Cobra Kai, Miguel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Film will release in theaters August 18th, 2023. Finally, a movie kind of close to my birthday, because it's always July or September. It's never near my birthday, ever. So maybe we'll go see this for my birthday. December's a big one, too. Yeah, well, I know December. Like Christmas is But, yeah. Uh, Kate Dickey has been cast as a villain in Loki Season 2. I believe I saw Game of Thrones. I don't really know much about Kate Dickey, but Game of Thrones, and I've never seen Game of Thrones, so I know it's probably a disappointment to some people. Me neither. Well, obviously. We just got HBO Max, so really. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3's first trailer and poster are out now, and it gave us the first look at Adam Warlock, Baby Rocket, and The High Evolutionary, and the film will be released May 5th. I'm really excited for this film. Yeah. It looks really good, especially, like, I think that the holiday special came out at the perfect time. Speaking of that, we posted our our opinions on that um, on Friday, or last week. But it's just, like, I think that was so perfect, because it got me so, like, excited for to see what they're going to do. Like, I got mm-hmm. excited when we saw Thor, Love, and Thunder, but that was already, that was back in July. So, you know, that that's come and gone. We're on to the next, you know, we moved right on to the next movie. So, sorry, I just ripped out some of my hair. What the hell? Why did it rip out like that? I don't know. (laughs) Pardon me. But yeah, I think this from... We got like a little bit of them. Then we got them again like in their own. So it kind of gives you like a... You know, especially now that we know they own... They bought Nowhere and there's all these different things. You know, I'm excited. And looks like there's going to be some deaths. (laughs) Uh, I know. Okay, listen. Oh, yeah, no, they are saying that. Yeah. Yeah. So my guess is Drax... I did say Rocket, but I've been rethinking about it because I feel like they're going to no. do his origin story, but yeah. I don't know. And I think one more person, I'm going to go, I don't want it to be, but I'm going to say Nebula, but I think we'll get like a post credit scene or somewhere when we find out she won't actually be dead. They'll just put more mechanics in her and bring her back to life. That's my guess. Because I just don't want her to be dead. I just feel like her, and you know, I'll throw Rocket down there. I just feel like those three are the most selfish out of the bunch, so for them to make the sacrifice play, you know it would be more emotional. Yeah. Indiana Jones 
yeah, that five was a good one. has officially been titled Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The trailer and poster are out now. The film will be out June thirtieth. Now we watched that trailer, and um, I love Indiana Jones. I think they're they're good movies, but it was hard with the trailer because I'm gonna be honest. I think I felt like a lot of the trailer was past film well, usage because he was be looking very young and very no, agile. They aged him. Uh, yeah, I but, saw somewhere that they said they did a little de-aging of him. Yeah, but some of the stuff I remember was from old movies and stuff, and like so it was like hard to like pick. Di- yeah, differentiate yeah. like what was actually going to go on in this movie. I think movie. I've seen like bits and pieces of the old movies. You probably just know them because of what playing the game. Yeah, I played the Lego Indiana Jones game, so that's where yeah, I really know them that. from. But some people, you know, what maybe this is the surprise for Mandalorian. Some people said since. The de-aging of him is, like, supposedly looking really good in the end of jo- Indiana Jones movie. Maybe we'll see, like, Han Solo or something in, like, a project. But it's, like, uh, I don't want, like, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I have already said no on Carrie Fisher. No. Do not de-age her. Don't bring back Princess Leia. It's fine. We can just do her story in books and comics and things like that. I just don't like when somebody's passed. You don't have... Like, you can't ask them now to do it. You know, Harrison Ford's here. If he says go for it, go for it. Heather Gay from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is going to release her memoir, Bad Mormon, on February 7th. I feel like this had to be mentioned. We don't watch uh, Salt Lake City, but I feel like it's such a momentous housewife thing to get your book. Uh, Every housewife's got a book. We We tried to watch the first season, but it was like... I think what oh. happened was it went on like that little break. We forgot about it. Yeah. Never caught back up. But I mean, I do want to know what's going on with Jen Shaw and her legal woes. <laughs> Speaking of housewives, OC has started filming their confessionals. They're on their way. What do you mean filming their confessionals? They First season even... 17. OC. Yeah, but they haven't started filming. For season they? 17? Oh, no. I'm thinking, of, finishing I'm thinking up. of Beverly Hills. No, Sorry. they're finishing up. They're doing their confessional filming. A lot of their confessional pictures were coming out of their outfits and all that. So they're getting close. So make sure you you watch along with us. Every yeah, weekend. I did see Tamara on her Instagram. She was yeah. posting. Stuff. I saw someone put like a collage of them all together. And then my last piece of news: Ky- Colin Goslin, the son of Kate and John Goslin from she TLC's was so disturbed by this. John and Kate Placate has done an exclusive interview with Entertainment Tonight discussing his life. He shared that he no longer has a relationship with his mom and six other siblings. I'm sorry, but I saw this Only coming. Hannah I saw this coming and I really to. thought it was going to be coming from more children than just him. Like I really thought more yeah. of them were going to turn on her. Um, but he does say he hopes to reconnect with them all one oh, day. Yeah, they're, they're his siblings and that's yeah. his mother and it's you know no matter how you slice it that's your family, but we watched them through the years when they were we first watched on. We watched everything. We watched yeah, we repeatedly Johnny watched them. Kate plus eight, Kate plus eight. Yeah, we, we watched, watched it all. <laughs> and uh, so we were, we, I'm sorry, uh, Colin, we were the people that kept your thing going. I know. Um, well, but, you know, John did say, I think there was an interview a while back that he said it's like it was hard not to keep going because you're getting these free pampers and things like that. And it's like it's helping yeah, your life. And, and th- he, he made a statement in the interview that said uh, they asked him, do you think the show, impa- how did the show impact yeah, that was your life or said. something like that? And would you, you think your parents would be together? And he did say he, he, he thinks his family would be together. However, it. he doesn't really remember yeah. a lot of the show because they were so they were young babies. they were so young and he said i don't remember a lot of the show um you know so but i just think it's interesting how he ended up in that whatever that institutional place that she put him for yeah. special needs how how he ended up there and how he got out of there by writing the dad the note and slipping it to somebody but it just i i don't i don't know why she chose to put him in there because not one of those kids was really truly well behaved yeah, I mean, some of them were of definitely them were better, better than it, others, but, but like, I mean, it had, look, there had to be one willful one out of the group, but it's just a shame because he did crazy. lose a lot of his time in that place. And yeah, you know. I think he said two years he was there. So yeah, yeah. very sad. But uh, well, you know what? For the other, now. the other two older girls, the twins, I mean, I'm, are I'm, in college, so they. I'm have, glad one sister is with him at least. Yeah, Hannah, which she was always the closest yeah. with Hannah from the show that I remember. I, mean, I think it was like him, Hannah. And Leah, maybe, would be, like, the ones that were always together. I'm kind of glad that, like, he's not just, you know, odd man out there. You know, it's kind of hard because when you think about it, none of the other kids really have social media that we know of. So, you know, like, the only ones that have social media are Colin and Hannah out of the little kids. Maddie has her own. I follow her on TikTok. Um, She doesn't post anything about the family because she's in college or, like, away at a different school. Yeah. And Kara has always been quiet, so no. There's, so there's really not, like, if she doesn't give them access to the internet, 
I don't really have an outlet to say anything. You yeah. know? But that's all my news for this week. Oh, Cooper's joining us for the Wheel of Watching. You guys can't see it, but we have winter colors on our wheel this week. Oh, yes. Lovely blues. Yes. It was the winter option on the wheel. Oh, he wants to sit on your lap. I know. I know. I know. All right. You sit on her lap. I'm going to tell us what we have on the wheel this week. Your favorite CW show. I wish I could watch this again for the first time. TV show edition. A show that I wonder why I watched. I have so many. What is that? That's our air conditioner. Why does it sound no, I thought that? I heard... I don't even remember what I said. Oh, shows I wonder why I watched. Um, a movie I missed out on the big screen. A movie I randomly put on and really liked. A movie that made me cry. My least favorite to favorite character. If I could switch places with a character. No superpower, though. Their backs hurt from carrying this TV show. And your favorite rom-com. Some of these I don't have answers to, so I'm going to have to come up with them on the spot if they get picked. Okay. Are we ready to spin that wheel? Sure. Spin that wheel of... Watching, watching, watching. <laughs> I wish I could watch it again for the first time. Mm. I do have an answer for this. I have two, actually. But Is it in the TV shows or the movies? TV shows. Okay. Have it. Do you want to go first, then? Sure. Beverly Hills 90210, which should be no shock to anyone. Um, but what what like, what like would make you want to rewatch it? Like, what was so I, big in it that... I just loved all the characters, and I loved... The seeing the Beverly Hills lifestyle, I just I, I like I love the whole, yeah. yeah, I love the whole thing. So it was just it was a good, clean, teen fun until it wasn't. You know. <laughs> All right, I have I had two, and it was like um, what? what do I want to say? Like not groundbreaking, but it was like. At the time, it was like the, it was like the first of all those kind of like, like Saved by the Bell kind of shows, teen dramas. Well, it was like one of the first of like the One Tree Hill, the yeah. uh, Dawson's Creek, all those. Like it was really the one that was like groundbreaking. The OC, yeah, it was like the first of. of oh my god, know. his tongue's out a little bit. Okay, so I had two. I'll do the one that would be least disappointing to first. Mandalorian. I'd love to see it again, just so that it was like the surprises of like Luke Skywalker, Baby Yoda, Soka. Really. Middle? That's what you'd want to Well, see? here's my other one. And I think I made this list before I finished watching the show. Maybe. I don't know. Killing Eve. Because, really, Killing Eve just had some of those big plot twists that you were like, <gasps> <gasps> but uh, I wish I could go back and tell myself if I was going to watch it again. Just stop before season four. Just watch one through three because what the hell, you'll be so disappointed. <laughs> That's the only thing I wish I could be like, just, just skip over that, girl. Hmm. Oh my god, we don't have Dancing with the Stars this week. No. We have nothing to talk about. That's alright, it'll be short, just like you like it. I can't believe you're like the Mandalorian. You were shocked by that. What? It's a good show. Yeah, like, it's just I'm like, not, no, I'm not saying it's... It's not. just one I of those just ones... you would have picked like a favorite show. No, it's not like Parks and Rec. See, here's my, here's my thing. I don't... Like, there's nothing surprising in that show that I want to be like... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there's no real big shocking reveals. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, there, a lot of shows that I would want to rewatch would be like a shocking reveal. You know? I've rewatched my show. I've rewatched Parks and Rec, but I forget things happen. It's just memory loss. Yeah, so I gotta give Killing Eve really and watched. Mandalorian a little bit, and then I'll Something remember. Something that I would want to rewatch, but... Alrighty. Well, what did you watch this week? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tell you, folks. She's got us on a rigid OC schedule. There should be time in that schedule that I made, because I allow myself to watch three of my episodes of my show so that should be when you put your show in mm-hmm. during my eight hour work week it's clocked in at a six hours i okay. clocked us in for watching our other shows and for housewives so you're giving me two hours to do what actual work at my job two hours to do actual work at your job then you get like an hour and a half to watch another show and then you get the other whatever time I to watch housewives i don't have the ability to watch tv at my job <laughs> lunch well, break on the way to and fro. But you, but you know what? You should have came to me with your schedule because I made yeah. it on my schedule. I'm, yeah, I'm going to probably have to revisit. And so you know what sucks? What? Is Peacock doesn't let you speed it up times two. Because sometimes, no offense, ladies. Oh, sorry, Cooper. I was pushing his foot. Um, it's a little, it's like some housewife well, parts can be Well, that's how I do get through it is some, I've watched it so I know this part is boring. Yeah. So like Plastic I, surgery scenes. Yeah, like some yeah. of them, you, jip, you just zip right Boring through. Boring character yeah. that she knows one season, like the Peggy's, the yeah. Quinn. Yeah, well, certain things that I know. Yeah. It's oh, a, it's no, attached to your head. Oh, could, you, could you curl that thing somewhere else? Oh, sorry. I did, no, I did see it. And it was really <laughs> oh, annoying to it, me, but I just couldn't figure it out. Okay, it I was going to yank it right out of her. I'm just taking everybody's hair out of their head. Cooper, Please you got some? No. 
leave him alone. Yeah, so I did manage to get some stuff in. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know what? My other priority. Oh, and, and I did watch well, some YouTube. Yeah, so my... Well, I haven't watched YouTube in a dog's age. And guess Not what? much, though. Vlogmas no, is starting. Like, yes. We're going to fall back on our Vlogmas. Where are you going? Okay. Oh, Cooper's leaving. Oh. No, you know what I was really doing? I've really been focusing on practicing my sign language and reading a book. My reading my book. So, you know, it's not negative stuff that I've been angry? doing. He you're is. Oh, you're so angry. Oh, so it's like I'm not being... Knitting. I'm not doing anything bad. It's no, just, I've been knitting. Knitting. We, but we've been knitting during Housewives, though, so... Yeah, that's that's what the good thing is. is All right. But well, I did. I watched Call Me Cat and I won one episode. Let's not get crazy. Well, there's only one episode. I know, so. but I'm just... I don't want you to think I'm crazy. Um, and buying Beverly Hills, I was able to finish that one. Yeah. I didn't get to my adventure. I didn't get back to that. And I didn't get to Below Deck. Yeah, and that's... And my soap opera, that's it. Yeah, so I watched Girls 5 Over Season 2. And I watched Abbott. But here's the thing. I was planning on watching Kung Fu. Every time I went on the fire stick to watch uh, Kung Fu, because you have to go through the stupid CW app because you can't watch it on Hulu because I need Hulu live TV. No. So it was just, you know, I kept going on there and it's not showing up. It's not showing up. It's not showing up. So I'm like, I don't have space on my phone to download the CW app. And then every time I'm on my computer, I'm doing stuff for the podcast. So I didn't watch Kung Fu, but don't fret anyway, because you know what? It, it will be fine. I'll do Kung Fu next week because this episode is the break episode where they're going to go on break till January. So you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We'll just save. I mean, we already missed a week without it. You can go another week. And also Abbott has one more next week and then we go on break. But yeah, so that's really all I watched. I was going to try to watch Grand Crew, but I was just, I don't know. I couldn't pull myself to do it. <laughs> all right. So you watch two shows then? Yeah. All right, so I watched two shows, so we'll just go back and forth. Who wants to go first? Um, I'll go mine's real quick. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Sadly. So in Call Me Cat, it was the Thanksgiving episode. Uh, it turned out that no one had any... Family? Place, yeah, any family like to go to this year, so she offered to host it. Apparently, she does not host well, so they were all concerned, but they still showed up anyway, and she, of course, had a theme, because that's how she does it. So she had a theme of... Did she hold it in the cat cafe? Upstairs. She lives above the cat cafe. Oh. So she was... She should have had Thanksgiving with the cats. So she had it upstairs, and it was a murder mystery dinner. And she gave everybody a character, and nobody like really wanted... Clue. Yeah, nobody really wanted to play, so they said every time <gasps> she bosses us fun. around, we'll drink. So instead, they all got plastered and were, like, drunk. And, like, this was kind of setting the episode up for... Here comes Cooper. The, He's back. <laughs> for the guy that she's dating to tackle the tough drinking subjects so they did a little bit about excessive drinking and alcoholism yeah i thought they were gonna i'm like are they really gonna give this guy a drinking problem like please no don't not on this comedy show like don't really go there but they they did but didn't like they they started and just said that he he they did one of those like they talked about something serious but they still kept it light but they resolved it enough like they didn't give him a drinking problem like he said that he's been drinking a little more than normal because he's trying to get his singing career off and He's not. He wasn't doing as well, and then he, I guess he had a good opportunity in Nashville, and he overslept because they got drunk on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And they wouldn't reschedule, so then he got upset again and went to a bar and had drinks and stuff. So he got arrested for um, public intoxication and peeing on a police car. So we had to call her to come get him, and so like that was kind of uh, what happened. You know what? I'm going to say I'm disappointed that she didn't hold the Thanksgiving in the Cat Cafe because we had Thanksgiving with. Uh, at our other family's house and they had a cat and I was sitting <laughs> it was me and my cousin and the turkey was right next to me even though I'm vegan it still was there I let it sit and the cat came up and my cousin offered him a piece of turkey and the cat swung up like I feel like there would have been so many opportunities for just hilariousness to break out with like trying to deal with the cats and you know good old turkey probably yeah yeah but maybe season four I don't know Maybe. But it's getting closer to the last episode for um, Jordan Leslie. Yeah. But so sad. And the sad part is they gave his character, um, like, they actually made his character official with this other guy that's on there. Like, they became official boyfriends. Yeah. So it's like, oh, God. Like, I don't know. Cooper's staring at himself in the mm -hmm. reflection of his I computer. saw that, too, yeah. Alrighty. I'll do Girls 5 Ever Season 2. So this season was kind of all about them now going into album mode. They got to make their first album. And... The kind of reoccurring thing is them not realizing how truly hard it was because, you know, they had kind of like a sleazy manager in mm. the 90s. You know, somebody that... Always a sleazy manager somewhere lurking today around. Today, not, you know, be appropriate. There'd be a lot 
wrong things. So, you know, this guy would pay for them to get on the radio, and they're kind of realizing all these struggles. Um, you know, so you see them in the process of basically making their album. And they also fit in a whole storyline for uh, Paula Pell's character, Gloria. She ended up having to get knee surgery before they filmed, and she was completely healed by the time the show happened, but they kind of, like added that into her character storyline so she could have a cane and all that uh-huh. which i was like i always think that stuff is interesting when they bring in like real life stuff because they did it on good girls too they had the one girl she needed to get knee surgery i think in the middle of filming the show mm. so she was able to get it and what they did was they ended up having <laughs> they had the other girl shoot the girl in the foot so she had to basically roll around the whole time does, and like, does the girl have knee problems in real life or something I don't, I don't, I don't remember why they both had to get knee surgery, both the actresses, but I just remember they had to get one in there. Weird. So they fit it in. And they also had a really great joke, too, uh, with Sarah Bareilles' character. They told her that the label has requested a love song, so in reply she said she's not going to write them a love song. No. Oh, not into her song. God. <laughs> um, and season three, even with or without the Netflix pickup, which it did, they're going to be going into tour mode, is what it looks like. Is now oh. they're going to take this album on, on the road. road. Okay. Which I'm not going to lie, the songs in the album they're they're more of like a comedy kind of song. They're not like you know, yeah, anything. But they're so they're some of them are like a little bit catchy that they get stuck in your head and they're really funny. Like the theme song, the Girls Five Ever song, it's been stuck in my head since I've watched the show. I'm not going to lie, hmm. it's catchy. I do. There is one weird plot point that they kind of wrapped up, but. I don't know. Typically, and originally, the girls five ever that was back in the 90s was five of them, obviously. One of the girls ended up dying in the time from there to now. And they say she fell off like an infinity pool and just died. You know, one of those crazy things. Cause it's one of those shows. But my thing is, they at the end of season one, they said, one of the girls goes, I think she's alive. And they had this whole episode with this like masked like singer where they were like, that could be her, that could be her. And they're like, no, you have to accept it. I, for some weird reason, still feel like this girl may be alive. I don't know. I just think it would be funny if she was. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she yeah, might sounds be. Sounds like my soap opera. Could be. I mean, listen, since the creator has the whole unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt thing, it would just, it would be very in that hmm. real house to do that. Alrighty, that was it. I really like the show. Recommend it. Watch it. Before the season three comes out on Netflix, which I don't even know. I don't even think they started filming, so you have time. But I thought it was it was something short, something cheeky. No, I do like shows like that. Like there was a show that uh, is, a Star is Born. No, I don't know. No, a Star is Born. Isn't that it's the, the movie? movie? There was another one, Star or something like that. There was a TV show with these three girls that like got together and created a group, and or they won a contest or something. But like I I do dig those kind of shows where they're like you know building groups together like and yeah. you know i think they're interesting um I'm, I'm gonna hopefully try to see what i have here it's, it's a tough yeah call. it's a tough call. so maybe cooper can read it to us yeah that looks like a he no. looked at me like shut your mouth <laughs> <laughs> okay okay pardon uh, me so i watched buying beverly hills and i did like it i was unsure i gotta be honest i was like yeah. i was like not really sure how they were gonna do it but um, if you like Beverly Hills, obviously, not Beverly Hills, if you like The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, it's kind of that style where they have story, but they have stuff going on, but you see no Beverly Hills people, not even Kyle was not in it, not once. I wonder if it's like a contract thing. I don't know, but she just wasn't, I guess they just felt like she didn't need to be in it, maybe, and they just didn't, um, they didn't show a lot of home life, a little bit, but not really. Yeah, there's, but I mean. It wasn't, wasn't a lot of home life, so, um. So much of her home life, though, is tailored to filming the real house yeah and so honestly like, the way this show is structured there was no reason to show kyle to yeah. be honest with you in a weird way um, the only thing i could think is if they had like a party or something at the they office they did have a party at the house and, and kyle wasn't there. wasn't there and i know kyle attends this party they had farrowine she's born on halloween so they have what they call farrowine i know she had to be there but they did not show her i wonder if it's like a contract with bravo i don't know maybe it could be like a clash or something i I don't oh okay thank you thank you for giving me my oh he's so kind but the show is on netflix as she said and it came out (laughs) he's holding his he has a he has a little mouse that's just a little wonder Wonder woman Woman mouse and he was holding her by the tail which means mice should not come here ever because he will get you oh now he's holding the his christmas toy that he got from his advent calendar should i give him that stick that i got him give him his square he'll play with the square no, but I don't okay, want to. Okay, yeah, I give him his. We got him a stick from a special pet shop. Because he's 
closet. Okay, we gave them the stuff, but they're just smelling it. I don't think. Oh, oh, oh he's got it in his mouth. <gasps> he knows what to do. Good boy, don't Cooper. After we we took a like. Sissy won't do because she's not looking to chew on things. He looks to chew on stuff. But he just can't get not the concept gonna, of hold. He's, yeah, he's, he's not going to be able it. to chew it that easily. So that's what's good all right. about it. Well, tell us about um, buying privilege. Right. Go so back while he figures. Oh, is, and he's going to sit okay. on it. Okay. The agency is run by Mauricio Umansky, who is Kyle's uh, husband. He started, I think, in the Hilton uh, family uh, agency. And you think? No, he, no, I know he did. No, but he knows because yeah. that's he was created. Drama. And then he, oh, she's looking at oh, oh okay, oh, okay. All right. So he went off on his own. Now both his daughters, Farah, um, which is the daughter from Kyle's first marriage, um, but he's raised her since she was like five. So, and and Farah still is very close with her own dad, but you know she does consider him like a, a second father to her. And his second in line, Alexia. So Alexia is, is Alex. You wrote yeah, Alexis. it's Alexia. It's not Alexis. It's Alexia. Oh, okay. I wrote it wrong. Oh, kissing. Oh, well. Um, she, I, no, she I don't, works there I, as well. I'm going to bet you you didn't write it wrong. I think Siri probably changed it. Well, it could have been because I was using Alex, Alexis in The Real Housewives, so she kind uh, of... Oh, hey. Okay, let's, oh, God, they're hitting each let's other. Let's switch. Let's switch. You try this She one likes now. that one, though. That's okay. Maybe she'll like that one. So, anyway, it's so... like babies. I know. They're like babies. The way the agency is set up, it's set up with senior agents and junior agents. And it's very. it was very interesting. I have to say, aside from just like liking to watch the houses and stuff like that, it was very interesting to see how commissions work, how um, the agents are set up and whatnot, because the way he does it is he has different teams under the agency. So like he has the Umansky team, which consists of him, Farah, Alexia, and a friend of hers, Joey Benzi, I think is his last name. And then there's another gentleman, Ben Bilalik, He's a senior uh, guy, and he has... He's been also mentoring a little bit of Joey as well, but he has... I don't know if he has any other people under him. Um, okay, okay, okay. Here you go. Wait a minute. Relax. <laughs> okay, and then there is John... I forget John's last name. I think it was something with a G. Grubman or Gurin. He has Sonica and Brandon under Oh, my his, God. He's slapping Sissy on that. Under his team. Um, <laughs> of, oh. It's never, it's never just normal here. It's, it's chaos always. Of junior agents, so Brandon and oh. <laughs> over dog sticks. Could you imagine? But it's just the way he hits her on the head. Like he taps her on the head right between her ears, like it's a damn button. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that I way. I shouldn't even right, be laughing. Let's go. This that's shouldn't my be taking cat. this long. Come on. All right, sorry. It's so, them. All right, we'll stop. So apparently, how it works is. If your team is put on a house to sell, yeah. everybody that's considered on the listing is who will get the commission. So the person that's running the the main show will get, like, so say Farrah was the one selling the house and they were the, the senior agent. They obviously get the commission, but Mauricio also gets a cut towards the agency. And then if, say, Alexia, the junior agent, was on the listing she would also get a cut. If she's not on the listing, she just gets, like, paid by, I think, the agency, but not, like, an actual cut. Well, and it doesn't go towards... what she be on it for, though, that list. She would be on to help with the open house. Like, say, oh. so she'd go there as somebody to help with... But see, She'd be, like, every... the person that make sure the house was, like, staged. And... Yes, but not everybody wants, wants them help. on them because there was this one girl, Sonica... Well, you lose money, too, like... Well, yeah, well, cuts into the other... Well, not so much, but you... The agency would get, like, say, 5%. But, you know, 5% of, like, say, 10 million is pretty decent. Yeah. But then you split that up between Mauricio gets a, a, a percentage, the the senior agent gets, whoever sold the house gets the most percentage, and then if there was anybody else on it, like the juniors, they would get a percentage, but it's not nearly what the others yeah, get. they're less. The people that get the most or that can bargain to get the most are people that bring in the most leads because according to Mauricio, he gets a cut because he is the person that they primarily, people come to the agency for because they want to come to Mauricio's agency. Yeah. Then he'll disperse it to other people or he still brings in the most leads because he's built up such a clientele that they come to him for, there's a girl that was on it this young girl, Sonica, she was on one of the listings and she didn't really get any kind of compensation because the owners didn't want her on the listing because she was, she didn't have the experience of sale. Yeah. Like she didn't have enough sales. So they're like, there's no reason for her to be on there. She's not going to help you sell it. Like, or so, like, it was like some reason why they didn't yeah. put her on. So she was like annoyed because she knows 
she did a lot of staging she did a lot of social media for it she did a lot of things like that but she did get i guess like a paycheck but so not it's like when you go and you drive by a house and it has like joe blow and well like sister. just like when we rented this place there was the guy that we dealt with but there was also the other girl so yeah. there was two people on this listing for rental yeah so like any one of them could have helped us but let's say she did more than he did so she might get a bigger commission yeah. or something so it's it's that type of stuff but it's just interesting how they break it down and they do get they do a lot of work and they do get screwed out of money because they have to share it with so many people but when you're at those kind of high prices like when commissions are like like 400,000 and you know 1 million and it's like yeah. it's insane i mean the houses are really interesting but farah who she's struggling right now with separating herself from the agency because her and Mauricio will partner on a lot of listings that either she'll bring in or he'll bring in but the ones that he brings in he passes off to her to help him and even if she's the one that's really like doing all the footwork the legwork going out putting let's say putting those signs all the stuff that you see like they don't show that kind of stuff the on, hard in this. part of this stuff yeah they don't show like the legwork that people do they show it like once the open house is there or something like yeah. that but it's it is a lot of like arranging and figuring out whatever so say she'll do all that kind of work and then he'll sell the house he'll come in and sell the house but like she's trying to say because i'm so busy working on your listings i don't have time to do her own go for any leads because that's what he's saying if you want more of a cut because she's asking for more of a cut well if you want more of a cut you have to come in with more leads well she's not coming in with leads because she's working on his stuff so yeah. it's a big thing to do and then she's also trying to get which we know because we watch beverly hills she is getting married but on the show it shows her like trying to get her boyfriend to like propose to her that they've been together for so long and apparently he's the founder of the beverly hills car club and is worth like one to five million dollars like he had, oh, he, had he he showed a warehouse of just exotic cars and when i tell you like a hundred were in there and every day he was coming home with a different car from his showroom like she, he'd pull up and she'd be like what do you have today and she'd come out and see what he brought and like it was insane um, so he's obviously got money too Mauricio made a statement that um, she's hit seven figures this year, so she's clearly doing well. She owns her own house, plus she owns a house with him. I mean, don't keep in mind, obviously, people that know how to sell and buy houses They're gonna probably get are getting the best deals, but yeah, you don't need this. So. Well, uh, there was a clip that I saw that you were watching, and I was in the room, where Mauricio, he just walked through the house, and he just, like, looking at the house, like, no thought in his mind, just knew. Forty-three million dollars you could get for this house, like that's oh, insane. Oh yeah, like, no, that's but that's what his skill level is, and that's what he said. He said you have to be, a, you have to know how to work your clients. You have to be a salesperson. That's the bottom line, and you have to know how to no, match that's just, houses like, to insane. people and know what you're looking at. Because they did show the youngest daughter, Alexia. They were trying to bring her in as a junior agent to help this girl that was pregnant, and she they showed her going around the house messing up big time, like. They wanted you to know what, what the stone was on the countertop. And, like, she didn't study her notes. So she didn't... She was calling the stone a different name. She was So the sister came in and had to, like, tell her, like, this was poor. You're not... Yeah. These people left and they're, they're going to be like, you don't know what you're talking about, so why would I trust you? And they're not going to come back. And so she was trying to work on finding, like, her own self because, of course, everybody knows she's the boss's daughter. Farah doesn't have the same problem right now because she's been there for so many years she's already established herself she's one of the highest paying yeah you know everybody wants to be like her because she's clearly proved herself and plus she's not his daughter per se yeah so i think that helps a little bit but this one they're all like oh she's been given opportunities that we will never have she's already on the umansky yeah. team which like everybody would like to be on mauricio's team obviously yeah. to be mentored by him or farah and she automatically gets that and then this guy joey benzi because he's her friend he's on the team so like they kind of look at these two like you guys have like an yeah. easy in which who, nepotism yeah you know i mean i understand so she feels like she's always like backpedaling to try to prove herself and you know she finds out that people are afraid to talk um to her because you know everybody's gonna they don't want her to yeah. bring something back to her father or what have you so it's like always a big to do but um her father ends up giving her the family house that we saw on Beverly Hills where she, they moved out of that last house that they used to have all the parties with the kidney-shaped pool. Milldale, they give her that the to sell. The one that they gave to Sutton to rent? Yeah. That one. So that house they are having her try to sell now. Mm -hmm. And she does sell it. She sells it for like $6 million, quick clothes. Sorry. And Keep going. So like she, she ends up selling it, but it's, you know, 
it was not like an easy thing. So, um, it, I, I liked it. It was, a, I, it was an interesting show. I mean, Farrah does get engaged in the end. Um, they don't show the wedding, which I thought they did. So I'm assuming maybe that they have another season coming out fairly quick Probably. or something. I don't know, but I could have just been making that up, but it was, it was nice. The houses that they sell are out of control. I mean, yeah. like I saw the one that I saw that he listed for $43 million. It was like a, yeah, I mean, the door I opened on us. It, they called it a propeller house because it has, like, three sections yeah, and, and it's raised off the ground. It's just, they're crazy. Like, they're good. Those shows, these shows are interesting to watch for one reason only. You, you know, maybe you can, but we can't afford a house like that. And it's probably going to be ever or never unless I win the lottery. But there are, like, interesting... Even things. so, even if you win the lottery, you would only put, put, finish the down payment on the house. And then how would you afford to pay for the rest of it? You well, wouldn't. No, but if you if you won the lottery, that was like a hundred million. You could buy that house well, easily. Yeah, I guess you'd I have. I mean, or some of the, not half. all not all the houses are that price. No, but no. some of them you could easily. I don't know what he just did with all the other sticks. He has them somewhere. Oh, uh, probably under his big old belly. But some of them you could easily. I'm coming somewhere. Some of them we you could easily afford, but they are interesting to watch just for a little like ideas that you could do on a yeah. on a cheaper like level or yeah. something to your house so it, it it's neat you know there, there was something i saw that i was like ooh, i would have done that that's not an expensive thing to do but i would have never thought to do it or something so i was like hmm interesting but yeah i, mean, I liked it they got all that space to fill, i liked so they the characters and stuff like they they weren't like overly dramatic it wasn't so much drama yeah it was so it was like, you know there was a few little like you know let's try to have a little fight here people talking here yeah. and there but it was interesting nothing that's like no, I, I, I mean, Housewife to be honest with you, it's making me probably want to watch um, selling Sunset. I was going to ask you, and I you think they're selling OC too. I saw somewhere, so I was going to ask you. I would be interesting. Interested in watching those? Yeah. By the way, also I forgot to mention he's got like forty-four offices worldwide, global. They just opened one in. So I bet he gets a cut from all those. Oh, they're his offices. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing is like everybody tries to vibe for his time because he's the CEO of the company, and. They're, oh, well, their resolve, I should have said, their resolve for helping Farah not want to leave the company was to hire a director of operations. So now if this person is handling all those little things that she's doing for him, instead of doing those things, like she can actually pursue her own stuff. Yeah. Sorry. And in the end, they bring in the final daughter, Sophia, who just graduated from college. So, of course, all the other agents are like, great another daughter how many are left the only ones left is Portia and I don't think she's coming anytime no, soon no she just had the bat mitzvah. bat mitzvah yeah so so she's still so they got time got, folks yeah. you got time but now the other one is coming in to see if she wants to work in the family business and he you know not for nothing but he wants all of them to work there because he said he worked with his dad and his their yeah, family well, business mean, why not? so he's like I wanted to make it a family business I'm so happy that they're here and he said Kyle's probably pissed but you know well, she doesn't really have a business. For no, them, not like not you know, like that. No, not and technically like they are following in her family business. They're on a reality show, so yeah, it's a right. twofer. I mean, yeah, in a sense, yes. <laughs> Alrighty, what did you watch again? Abbott. Oh, I don't have much, you know, because it's just one episode. So this one was sick day. Basically, Janine ends up getting sick. You know, one of those I'm not getting up from the toilet kind of things. Hmm, I had that about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she ends up getting hmm. sick, and the issue is. That it's kind of like, I think it was, you know, it's, I forgot. Yeah, so they just had Halloween not too long ago. So it's kind of one of those seasons where everybody's getting sick. So they had a shortage on subs, basically. Uh -huh. And Ava didn't read the memo that they were going to have this it's shortage. Funny, I'm surprised that nobody's done that before because that is just a typical topic for a school, sh like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that would be for a good topic for a school thing. Well, so it ends up with Ava having to cover Janine's classroom. Which Janine is, you know, kind of like, she left like this whole big detailed book, like these kids need to stick to their routine. Put the date on the board, read in the book, give them their test, and everything will go fine. Just follow what I left you. Of course, Ava doesn't want to do that. You know, so Gregory tries to help her. He's like, just, just do it for today, and then you'll realize. And it does end with Ava trying to be a little bit less um, selfish, you know. But it's only so that she doesn't really have to cover anybody ever again. She's going to make sure she reads her memos she gets from the school, fix things. 
Because one of the big things was, like, a little side thing was, like, they didn't have any paper because she had wasted all the paper to print her own stuff. So she ordered so much paper now that they are, like, overflowing with paper in the mm-hmm. end. But I will say, I finally, I mentioned, like, a while back that I wanted more of an Ava-focused episode, and this was definitely it. So I finally got what I requested. Manifested it, and here it is. I know. Look at it. Um, and I think next week is the last one before they go on a little break till January. I think it's, like, a holiday-themed episode, which is always fun. So that's exciting. And then my two reoccurring shows. I know, Cooper. My two reoccurring shows. Well, he watches it with me. Um, they're going to go off. So I don't have anything until beginning yeah, of I January. don't know what I'm going to do. Cause, yeah, Everybody's I don't... going on like the holiday break. Which is so weird that they would go on a holiday break when people are home to like watch. Well, like, the only good thing is the fact that they're going on a holiday break. Well, it's not good. Because I was going to say, we do have holiday stuff we have to watch. Yeah. But... That means for Mondays we'll have nothing. No. Um, I just think I have to find something that I want Yeah, I, I do have some or... things that I have planned that I want to watch coming up. I want to watch, you know, The Bad Batch and all that. Well, that was your, those were all your shows, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I didn't get to watch Below Deck, um, and it was only one episode, and I didn't get to watch that adventure one again, the Below Deck adventure. Yeah. I'm going to tag team them, and I'll do two of them. I'll try to do yeah. those four and get them squared. So, what we're going to watch this week, we're going to do OC 9 and 10. Every weekend we're doing the OC. Pretty much till the end of December, we're going to be doing the two uh, episodes of OC. And Friday, we're going to do Batwoman. We only have, like, the last four episodes left of the show or so. Because mm-hmm. it went on the mid-season break. Then we got rid of live TV and we couldn't watch it. And now you can only watch it on HBO Max. So, we have HBO Max for the time being. So, we're going to watch it. And that will go up on Friday. We'll kind of give our overall thoughts on the whole basically the entire show because we're not just talk about those four episodes and you know maybe we'll predict the ending since it got well not predict it i guess we'll give our version of what the show would have ended if we could have had our choice for me this week i'm gonna hopefully the fire tv will work and i can watch kung fu this one's really wiping yeah, his he's, face he's on me like slapping it's... his head into her phone and then i'm gonna watch abbott episode 10 and then i'm, and I'm on break um, and I'm also going to start the TV show Loot with Maya Rudolph. That's on Apple TV. Hmm. I'm going to start that uh, because we have the Apple TV subscription. So far, all we've watched is Selena Gomez's show. Uh, hmm, so I know. We, I thought about that, too. Yeah, it's ending in January. So go look, pick your show out. And if you have any Apple TV recommendations, let us know. I have Loot for now. And I think after that, I'm going to try to do the morning show or something. <laughs> oh, my God. He's going to knock that phone out of your hand. Thank God yeah. you have that, like, ring on the phone. Yeah, he's so savage. that's what I'm he's thinking about. Maybe if I can, maybe I'll try to throw a grand crew in there or something. I don't. I think Luke's supposed to be a comedy because I do want to always have a comedy in my thing. But oh, nothing oh goes God, going he's, on. It's bad. Um, so maybe I'll either throw in grand crew or maybe I'll try to get Veep in somewhere or Blockbuster. One of those. We'll have to wait and see what I bring to the table on oh, next what week. What she brings to the what table. What I bring to the table. Alrighty, what are you planning on watching? All right, start. So for me, it's going to be Call Me. Cat, which you like to call her Kate. That's all right. I know it takes me always a minute. Um, so I'm I'm just a little. Oh, I do. I'm sorry. She has Netflix up on her phone. I do want to see that Wednesday, Wednesday I know. show. I know. I'm I've heard Jenna Ortega is really good. I'm not a fan of scary, but I don't the think Adams family. But I don't think this is supposed to be. I scary. just feel like I think this will be hearing more so good. So many good things about well, it. Well, I'm thinking it's going to be more like a. Um, dramedy like you know or yeah. comma type thing i just and yeah. i've heard jenna ortega went crazy like i heard she said she doesn't blink at all if you watch the whole show you'll never see her blink as the character. yeah well she never did on the show it was like a crazy thing um i don't know so we'll have to maybe we'll, maybe we could fit this in somewhere yeah let me look at the schedule well, let's see how many episodes they have because they probably that's the only good thing about netflix i have to say they don't really have many episodes no, it works they, for well, us they, no but they keep them to just like a small amount like mm. eight like and i think eight is very doable maybe thursday and friday we could fit it in somewhere because we're watching how, batwoman that's monday how wednesday. I'm, buying... I'm, I'm seriously looking at a whole book in detailed writing of hours by minutes by everything this is seriously she's got out. that kind of time folks um no, that's that's what Netflix does though. They do like eight episodes, which is very doable because Yeah. Where's he go? Uh, he's playing with he's something. Trouble. So maybe maybe so, we'll squeeze that in somewhere. We'll see. So call me Kate, Below Deck Mediterranean and Adventure. I'm gonna try to double back on both of yeah. those. Um I want to see Raven's house. Home. Home. Oh no. He's, he's so evil. Raven's home. Um because is he stuck. Why, does he look stuck? I'm trying to look in the reflection of the TV to see if he's stuck. He's absolutely stuck. Oh, Jesus. Come on. 
Okay, and then uh, another show that I watched that is coming back is Firefly Lane. So I, you're going to start that one? Yeah, it's season two. Um, this stinking show. I don't think I've ever heard of this show. It is with, um, who is this? What's her name? Uh, Catherine Heigl and oh. uh, Sarah Clark. I've heard of Catherine Heigl, but I've never heard of this show. Sarah Clark, I know you've, you've seen this, this lady. I'm sure of it. I'm just looking, and I wish there was a new Love Island, but... I know there isn't, and it's just depressing. Oh, oh, I heard, I saw this show. I meant to send it to you. There's some new dating show. MTV? No, you show, you sent it to me on, uh, it's coming out on um, Hulu. Oh, maybe it was. You are something, you're the one, something. something. I, no, something, I know. I did I, send you one, right? I saw it, but it's not, it's not out yet. It's, it's, it's soon. soon. I think it's December, I think. But I think I might touch on the Selling OC and. Well, se- Sunset's well, the big guy. I know, but you know what? I'm just, like, annoyed with them, to be honest with you, because <laughs> they're so, I don't know, well-known. Sometimes but it's just the, it's, when a show is too overhyped, it just yeah, puts it back turns to me, Yeah, it turns you off. Yeah. And I feel That's like, why I like the Wednesday show. I'm like, it's so overhyped that I like, don't want to watch it, but I heard it's really no, good, so I do my, watch No, my it. reason for saying no to it is because um, it has such, dr- but I saw this girl on, t- on TikTok and she was hilarious. Um, it just has such hype. And drama, and all you hear is about is the drama. That I'm like, are you guys even selling anything? Like, I do like the selling part. So, well, you know, like, maybe maybe watch each pilot of of OC and then and, Sunset and compare and, and see which one you think. Would I be feel more. like there was like a lot of fakeness because they do because they've been on for so long. They talk about how this one wasn't really with this one, and they were pretending to be with this one for the show. See, I don't like that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, like, that's one thing I liked about buying Beverly Hills is that I know who's doing what. Yeah. Because we already know their backstory, but yeah. I don't know. We'll see. But um, I think I might start with the selling OC because they only have one. Oh, that's true. Always go so for the that's just one. a little easier. There's five of the other one. I don't know. Have you seen that snack chef? That looks good. Yeah. I love a good baking show. <gasps> There's Laguna Beach is on Netflix now. What? How many seasons? Only one and two. Oh, there is only two. Wow. Interesting. That's a good one. Anyhow, that's probably it for me. Uh, I, and I'm honestly going to be honest. I'm probably reaching folks. Yeah. But we'll see. Because she's, she, it's either she's going to listen to a show on the way home or she's going to listen to her podcast. <laughs> well, that, or actually I'm trying to find an audiobook so that I can listen to an audiobook because I feel like that's better. But like an informational audiobook that can teach you something while yeah. you're walking home. All right. I think that is all though for now. Do you have any you're good on your shows? Oh, reboot. I kind of forgot about yeah, that I one. Know. I really kind of want to see that one. I'm going to add it to my 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 list. I don't think yeah. I have it. All right. Yep, that's it. I think that's I'm it. Done. Always as always check our Instagram. We watch it all cuz that's where we post the official, you know, kind of what we're really going to watch. And you know, oh, keep you gotta follow because you never know what we're gonna show on the story. Sometimes we share news, our news there first. You never know. Oh, you know what else I heard too? Oh, jeez. Randomly, I'm sorry, I don't mean to do that. That '70s show that people used to watch. The '90s show. They're gonna have that '90s show now. They're gonna yeah. move them to that. So that's interesting. I'm curious to see. Um... Yeah, I heard about that. Oh my gosh, Malibu Country. It's now in our. <gasps> Might have to watch it. Oh my god! I mean, I Heather had Dubrow? watched it. I did watch it, but I don't know when Heather Dubrow was on it. But let's add it to my list okay. for Heather. Go ahead. I mean, it does have uh, Lily Tomlin in it, so you know, yeah. can't go wrong with that. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening or watching. Go ahead and give us a rating. We hope in this holiday season you will give us a five. Generous. Yes. Um, and also make sure you subscribe or follow the podcast, turn on the notifications, and if you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Don't give us a thumbs down. Instead, leave a comment telling us how we can improve. And I think that's all. All right. Hit the button. Yep. Stuff to do. Oh, wait, no. Go check out our other podcast. We talk about it all. Oh, yeah. Our first official episode will be out on Wednesday, and we already have our intro episode up. Go check it out. All right. Now you can say it. Hit the button. <laughs>